if you could give one tip for a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced player, you've never met them before, you just have to give them, each one of them, like a little soundbite tip of, I don't know you, but this probably is going to help you. What would you pick for each one? Oh, interesting. Uh... <laughs> Well, I guess it kind of just it just kind of just depends. Uh for beginners um learning songs. I mean, that's what you want to do. A lot of learning songs. I've had beginners come in and be like, you know, I I've been running this scale or I I know this like I've been trying to play my bar chords. I'm like, "Do you know how to play any songs?" They're like, "Well, not really." I'm like, "You need to learn some songs, man." Like it's it's you're learning the language then. So like with beginners, learn as many songs as fast as you can and as fast as you can, but you know what I mean? Like learn as many songs as you can in that first year, just learn songs and learn songs and learn songs and don't, you know, and, and, and do some of the fundamental stuff. Like you got to learn a variety. I think it's important. I think sit down and learn, you know, a Neil Young song. And then in the same breath, the next day, sit down and learn, you know, a Metallica song and then learn just any songs you like, because like for me, it was so helpful to have this broad, um, you know, interest when I first started playing, I would learn strummy, uh, chord songs on an acoustic, but I would also learn heavy riffs and I would learn solos and maybe one of the solo, you know, I would learn like Metallica solo. And then I would learn a Santana solo and, or I would learn, you know, a Doobie brothers funky guitar rhythm. And then I would learn, you know, Cowboys from hell <laughs> or, or I would learn a drop tuned, static x song and then i would learn a standard song from heart like barracuda or something and i think learning a variety and 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 not really and, and making sure that you're kind of covering the bases in the song so learn some things that learn songs that are they're providing different things um because you'll learn a lot of the fundamentals um and obviously spending some time for beginners you got to spend time with being able to switch between chords. That's a huge thing. It's like a really hard thing for beginners is like switching from one chord to the next chord. So you gotta, I sat down for like a week and I had this video that my brother bought and it was about that very thing. And I just did it until I mastered it and it was hugely helpful. So it can be a pain in the ass because it really takes some your, your time um, to sit down and specifically focus on being able to play chord changes so switching from a g to a c to a d to an a and making it seamless because you know for beginners that's really difficult sometimes and so that's a huge thing to spend some time on so learning songs and get the fundamental ability to change through chords is is huge um intermediate um learn the cage system learn and master the caged system because by that time you understand your chords and you know how to move them around a little bit but understand where the notes are on the E string and the A string. So you can find any chord you want and learn basic music theory of like A, B, C, D, E, F, G and where those notes are at only on the lower strings. Really, that's all, that's all you need if you're an intermediate. I mean, obviously you can move beyond that and, and really master the caged system. So having an understanding of how the chords and the arpeggios and the pentatonics and the chord scales all interact together um, while continuing to learn songs. <laughs> and then, challenging yourself intermediates need to challenge themselves like constantly trying to like set goals of like that song seems really hard um i don't know if i can play it well just try and then see how it goes like uh, the, how many times that's how it became uh, you know the player i am is by not really setting limitations i would hear remember in my first year i heard this lamb of god song and i was like that sounds insane i don't know if i can play that but i'm gonna take the, I'm going to give myself the next year. And this was like a couple months into playing. And then I learned that song within like a month. Um, and it's because I was like, I just made it and I, I gave myself like permission to, to try it. And then same thing happened with like learning Steve Vai stuff. I did not allow myself to even touch that stuff. And then one day I was like, I need to learn how to play like this. So I just learned, started learning Steve Vai licks and I probably played them, you know, crappy or whatever, but I would learn whole Steve Vai tunes and it was like all these licks and struggled through it and took forever, but you know, it changed the way I play and it was hugely helpful. And then for advanced students, um, I would say, uh, um, keep an open mind. You don't know everything. 
um, because that's what advanced people do. They get to an advanced level and they're like, yeah, I'm pretty good. Um, act as if you still have lots to learn because you do. Um, and, uh, you know, there are many things you can learn. So, um, treat everything you see online as an opportunity to learn because you could know something that I've never played before. And I'm like, Oh, I never thought about doing that. And that's an opportunity to learn and grow and vice versa. Same thing. You know, there could be something like, I never did that before. I mean, I have me and my buddy in town, he'll be like, what's that thing you did right there? And I'll show it to him. And he's like, I can't do that. That's so weird or vice versa. And then, you know, and, and you, you work on those things and, and just try to learn from each other. Um, and for advanced people and for every level is transcription, uh, learn to transcribe and analyze solos. So not transcription in the way of like writing it down that you can do that, but learning stuff by ear and then analyzing what's happening. So if you learn a solo, you, 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 you sit down, you put on a, you know, one of your favorite guitar players. And, you know, I just did this with a Robin Ford thing. I put on a, he was just playing through a blues. I put it on. I didn't allow myself to go like, I know that lick. Mm, I know that lick. No, I would go, okay, let's see what he did there. He did that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do know that one. So, I mean, I, I can use that. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll remind myself that that is a possibility. And then I'll see something like, oh, he did that like slightly different than I ever would think to do that. And then you're like, what chord is this? Oh, he's playing over that chord. Okay. It's this scale happening over that chord. He's landing on this chord tone. Okay. Locked. Or then you come across uh a lick where you're like, that was really cool. What the hell was that? And then you, you learn it. Then you go, okay, what were the chord changes or what were the chord? Okay. That was this chord. He was doing this. Okay. It's got this arpeggio in there, but it's also got this, this scale in there. And then I'm landing on that note. Okay. I'm going to try that in the same situation, put on a backing track, try the same, lick. put on the backing track, try something like put on this backing track, expand the lick into something that naturally flows out of it that you would do or, or vice versa coming into the lick. Um, yeah. And that's what I would say for advanced people. Um, and it just depends on the style of music. I mean, obviously like I'm, that was like a bluesy jazz reference in that light, but you could do the same thing with metal. You know what I mean? Like, you know, learn a Petrucci thing. And then you go like, what the hell was that? And how can I expand that across the fretboard? Um, that could be something because the, the metal players are doing a lot of sequential, like sequences stuff. So you could analyze a sequence and then be like, cool. How do I expand that across the fretboard? Okay. I can do that same thing in this area, this area, this area. Now I can play that in every position. Um, so yeah, I think for the advanced thing, it's like, you know, you never know everything and don't act like you're, you're too good for anything. I mean, I always am like trying to learn in any capacity. And, um, the mistake I made early on when I got good fast was like, I'm pretty good. Like, I, I know that. And then that was just a dumb attitude to have. Um, anytime I see something, it's like, yeah, I might know that, but like, let's see how that was like uh, executed. Can I execute it in a same, a similar manner or will I learn something from the way it was executed? Um, yeah. 